of the headquarters for the um, gun industry today in Newtown, Connecticut, to hold them accountable. There are about 35 people out there, just like you, holding them accountable and asking the gun industry to be more responsible. Gun violence is an important topic to us. Uh, we have been working on this over the past year. We, we worked on SB 221 of the legislature. Teresa will talk more about that. We believe it's time for the gun industry to be held responsible because these tragedies just keep occurring over and over and over again. We are here today because the gun industry is um, holding their annual trade show this week um, in Las Vegas to sell their products. The Shooting, Hunting, Outdoor Trade Show, also known as the SHOT Show, is here in Las Vegas, and we believe it is time that we hold these gun manufacturers accountable for blocking sensible gun legislation at every level of government, including our own government here in Nevada. These manufacturers contribute millions, to block, millions of dollars to block and stop important gun legislation like background checks, essentially putting profits over people. Just today, in a theater in Florida, we saw again there was a tragedy. A man was arrested for shooting two people in a movie theater, and one was killed. All because he was using a cell phone during a, a movie. That's unacceptable. Why are we allowing this to happen in our country? When are we going to learn from our mistakes, and when are we going to start taking action? This is totally unacceptable. What will it take for the gun industry to really take this issue seriously and stop blocking good, sensible legislation? As a gun owner myself, along with my husband, I believe that gun ownership and manufacturing comes with great responsibility. We must do better, and so should the gun manufacturers. Nevadans overall univer support universal background checks. However, Nevada is one of the deadliest states for gun violence. We received an F for the strength of our gun laws according to the Law Center to Prevent Gun Violence. If these gun manufacturers want to come to our state to make money, then they need to do more to help pass sensible legislation to help prevent guns from getting into the wrong hands. I now want to introduce our wonderful panel of speakers tonight. We have Teresa Crawford, she is a board member of Progress Now, and she is a local gun violence prevention activist. We have Linda Cavazzo, she's a local mental health specialist. And we have Gary Peck, and he is the executive director of the Nevada State Education Association and also a board member of Progress Now. Please help me welcome them. Our first speaker tonight will be Teresa. Hello, dear friends. Many of you have stood with me over and over again, uh, whether it's holding signs, uh, going into the lobby, our legislators, writing letters to the editor, and making our voices heard at rallies to let our elected officials know that the current state of affairs for gun violence in Nevada is unacceptable. We expect them to do better. Nevada is a great place for families to build their lives. I love this state. But because of the multi-million dollar gun lobby, we have weak laws, and those weak laws lead to higher rates of gun violence. <coughs> it seems obvious, but research has shown that this is absolutely true. We have no state background check law, and um, an attempt to get a federal background check law failed to pass the 60-vote filibuster threshold um, last spring. Um, Senator Dean Heller is quite complicit in this. Um, he wants to be a moderate, and yet he voted against a sensible, safe background checks law that would have greatly benefited Nevada. Uh, the 2013 state scorecard issued by the Law Center to Prevent Gun Violence gives Nevada an F, and we have actually been an F year after year after year. In 2010, and um, if you'll bear with me just for some statistics and numbers, and then we'll make them real in the cost of human lives and tragedy. In 2010, Nevada had the ninth highest rate of gun deaths per capita, and everyone knows that that means rate per 100,000. 
Uh, we aren't that large a community in this valley, about 1.2 million people, and yet uh, it seems like almost every day when we uh, listen to the news or, or pick up a newspaper, um, somebody gets shot somewhere. Uh, we, um, if, if it was a state with a, low, a much lower rate of gun violence for the number of people we have here, we wouldn't be seeing this almost every single day. Guns purchase, uh, we have the ninth highest rate of crime gun exports. That's when guns purchased in Nevada without background checks are through straw purchases are recovered in crime scenes in other states, uh, usually California. Uh, California called and they really want us to take our guns back. They're tired of it. <laughs> we have the nation's um, fourth highest suicide rate and more than half of those involve guns. I first started looking into Nevada's gun violence statistics back in 1999 when I was a journalism grad student. And I can tell you, some of these numbers haven't budged in, uh, in years. And, and I believe the reason is our very, very weak and ineffective gun laws. Women are at especially high risk because of the gun lobby's opposition to expanded background checks that would deny firearms to their violent, intimate partners. In 2010, Nevada had the fourth highest rate of gun homicide among women, and uh, sadly, that's an improvement. We were the first highest just a few years ago. The presence of a gun in a domestic violence situation increases a woman's risk of death by 500%. Um, one reason lives are now being saved is that Metro recognizes that and is working with local um, women's violence organizations. Um, when they're called to the scene of a domestic violence incident, and if there's a gun in the household, they advise the woman of her increased risk and advise her to exit that household and do everything they can to remove her that very day or night that the call is made. Expanded background checks would reduce these numbers and do so quickly. Um, we, here in Nevada, uh, many of us worked very hard on a plan to do this. In the 2013 legislative session, a bill introduced by Senator Justin Jones and supported by the majority of our legislators and the majority of Nevadans, more than 80% in multiple polls, it passed both chambers. It passed the assembly on the last day of the legislative session in 2013. I actually hoped that Governor Sandoval would support this life-saving legislation. And like many of you, I was heartbroken when he vetoed an important and life-saving bill. So what are the consequences of his veto? About one month later, um, in Reno, an um, on-duty police sergeant sold her Glock to a teenager who had been adjudicated mentally ill. That teenager could not have passed any background check. On review of the situation, um, uh, the prosecutors in Reno determined that the sergeant had broken no laws. She had every right to sell that Glock to anyone she wanted, anywhere she wanted, without a background check. Even though she showed a reckless disregard for public safety, she wasn't prosecuted for that, she was demoted, but she's still working for the police force. Um, the gun was retrieved before a tragedy occurred, and it could have. The boy's mother said he'd never actually seen a gun or touched a gun, and the sergeant had to show him um, how it worked. Um, just north of us, and I might, I might choke up talking about this, there's a street name for Stanley Cooper. Do you all remember who Stanley Cooper is? Yeah, he's, he's the, um, he was actually a private security guard working for the Marshal Service in January 2010 at the Federal Building. I had seen him, um, you know, coming there on, on various, for various reasons. Um, tall man, friendly, handsome, a grandfather who just loved to work. He was gunned down by an ex-felon with a shotgun that the guy bought in Arizona uh, legally and uh, he would not have been able to uh, buy it if he would had to go through background checks. And in fact, he had tried to buy a gun from a dealer and been turned down. Stanley Cooper is a hero, and he would be alive today with his grandchildren if we already had a background checks bill. Finally, and most uh, really heartbreaking, Nevada's statute for child access prevention is weak and toothless. Uh, you, you all heard about the case last June, um, the, the young girl who was shot by her friend in the friend's home. And in this situation, you had a gun owner who kept a loaded, a loaded gun, um, a Glock with a chamber in the round, he kept that on a shelf um, in the kitchen, 
and his 14-year-old daughter was home alone. A 13-year-old girl visited. The 14-year-old climbed up and retrieved it and uh, somehow unintentionally shot her 13-year-old friend. The girl's father arrived before the medics did and had to go through the tragedy of having his child die in his arms. These things are absolutely unpreventable. Did the man who owned the gun commit a crime? Not in Nevada. He did not. We have no laws that would convict or prosecute anybody for criminal negligence um, if the gun is supposedly hidden, and which it was in this cabinet. So because of that, um, our uh, district attorney, Steve Wilson, had no statute uh, with which to prosecute uh, this person for allowing his daughter to un inadvertently shoot another child. Um, I read the statute. All it says is gun owners are supposed to keep the guns in a hide them in a secure location. I don't have children, I'll confess to that. But I remember being a child, I could find anything. And can your children find anything? Can they find Christmas presents? Um, uh, love letters between mom and dad hidden somewhere? I mean, think of all the things your children can find. And, um, and I think most of you with children automatically lock up the liquor and if you have it in your house and uh, if you have small children, um, you, you walk out medications and toxic household cleaners, but guns, there is nothing uh, that requires a parent to keep guns away from children in this state. States that have um, strong child access prevention laws are seeing dramatic and immediate drops in, in the numbers of children who are killed and injured uh, inadvertently with guns. Uh, the mother of the girl who, who was shot is, is now speaking out, which is why I feel more comfortable talking about the situation. She is speaking out, and if you go to the Moms Demand Action website, you can see her story. Um, she's pretty determined, and she thinks Nevada needs a safe storage law, and so do I. Um, so what is the common thread that connects all of these preventable, stra all, all of these preventable <coughs> tragedies? Um, that is our lack of effective gun laws. And why don't we have effective gun laws? The, gun, the answer is right over there on this strip at that show that's underway, uh, sponsored by the NSSF and the, and, the, and the SHOT Show. This is the gun industry in all of its glory. The gun industry's determined, severe, multi-million dollar opposition to any kind of gun, safe gun laws is the common thread. They oppose any law or regulation that they think threatens their bottom line, even while they ramp up marketing to young people. We are here together to overcome this opposition to common sense with our own common sense, hard work, and our combined powerful voices.